everyone, it's Brandy J here, and you're tuning in to The Clipboard. Today I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing one of the hottest bands out there, Messenger. Hey guys, how's hey. it going? Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Welcome are you? to The Clipboard. Hey, glad, glad to be here. Thank you. We have with us today, lead guitar, Victor Butler, keyboardist, Bob Butler, and bass guitar player extraordinaire, Dino Stewart. Thank you, Brandy. Glad to be here. We're all happy to be here. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> the first question I'd like to ask you guys, is there any significance behind the name Messenger? Well, I think if you find the word Messenger in any dictionary, you'll find that it says you're a carrier of a message or employed by someone to carry a message. So what we're trying to convey is that type of thing, but through music. So that's what we're trying to do, actually. That's beautiful. Mm. Did you just come up with that right now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you knew how long I worked on that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's so great. With all the varied styles of music out there today, where do you think your style of music fits in? Well, I don't think we try to check any box. We just kind of make music um, from, you know, from from our hearts and we just put it out there and, and let the, the, the listener define what they're hearing. Let it flow. Mm -hmm. Yep. What do you think? That's about it. We let it flow. Mm -hmm. it comes from within. Let it flow. Mm -hmm. Another beautiful statement. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let it flow. <laughs> Next, I have a two-part question. Mm. All right. Two part question. <laughs> Here we go. How do you come up with ideas for your songs? And is there just a single songwriter? Hmm. Well, basically, we all write songs. All of us are songwriters. And we will, we collaborate, you know, amongst each other. Like one of us will come in with maybe like a song that's either 100% done or maybe like 50% done. Or 2% done. Right. <laughs> or it's just an idea. It's just an idea. Exactly. And uh, we'll sit down and we'll woodshed it and run it around the table or the gambit and pretty much we'll figure out if you know the song works or if it's marketable or commercial enough to for us to play it or record it. Right. And like a good chef, we put our ingredients in there and then we let the people taste it. Except he puts too much onions. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with onions. <laughs> So, um, that being said, where do you come up with the ideas individually? I can speak for myself. Uh, I can listen to a phrase or hear a phrase that someone may say on a television show or just speaking, and it'll just click something with inside myself, and I'll know that's a good title for a song or write a song about that. Or then at the same time, to contradict that, it can be a life experience that I've been going through or something. Yeah, that's a good answer. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. On your album, What Am I Doing Here? You have Say It Again, which has really taken off for you. Can you give us a little background on this song? I should take a minute to, to introduce some of the guys in the group that aren't here today. John Moore plays drums for us, and we have Julio Hansen, who does our lead singing. Dwayne Lewis is a saxophonist who also plays in the group. And John does a lot of the writing, um, especially on the first album we did, which was uh, What Am I Doing Here? If you had a word or phrase to best define that song, what would it be? Uh, for me, it would be forgiveness. Forgiveness. I'm going to go with them. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style. <laughs> <laughs> One word, forgiveness. Here is Messenger and say it again. What? 
welcome back. And we just finished listening to Say It Again. That is such a beautiful song. Yeah. Thank you. Julio has an amazing voice. Thank you. We think so as well. We'll have to have him come by next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'd love to be by. <laughs> so, something that I've personally been wondering about this entire time, and I'm sure many of your audience has been wondering, what is the significance behind the mask? Oh. Hello. What is the significance behind the mask, Dick? Oh, no, you tell them. You don't know what the... Of course I know, but you don't know. <laughs> Uh-oh. Basically, um, when we formed the band, the idea was originally that everyone was, was supposed to wear a mask. And um, pretty much I'm the only one that carried it out. <laughs> so was this uh, your idea or was the band's idea? It was my it's idea. Like my idea. <laughs> His idea. And um, what happened? You guys weren't digging it? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> absolutely not. No. Uh, I'm going to have to get me one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling yeah. inspired. Yeah. No, um, basically for me, uh, it's it's it also signifies the band. If you're looking at a bunch of pictures of a lot of other groups or a lot of other bands, you could pretty much tie in, okay, I know this guy with the mask, that's Messenger. Um, I also do it to try to keep myself grounded, to, to remain being humble, to not get too far out there because I can really get out there as far as being this character but not as far as the person that I am and uh, I've been doing it for a while now so it's kind of like an alter ego in a way it is like an alter ego <laughs> that's cool mm -hmm. thank you well I won't tell your secrets <laughs> <laughs> there is some truth to that because when we would go and play people would say we know that's messenger because the guy with the mask right right and you'd so be surprised it, how many times we were playing on shows with other acts and uh, even the other acts would come running up to uh, Dino and say, oh, I'd love to see what you look like under that mask, start trying to pull his mask off. And no way. Kind of oh, yeah. <laughs> All the time. And, and, you know, just happened yeah. so frequently. There was really a crazy story where there was a young lady one time. We were playing at the Roxy and uh, she was dressed like me. And literally, she said to me, you show me yours, I'll show you mine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just love the fans? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do. I do. Mm -hmm. So did you show her? <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> now back to your music. It's a goal to have your music loved both internationally and nationally, of course. Mm -hmm. You guys wrote a song about former President Barack Obama mm -hmm. telling a brief story about his rise to the presidency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The YouTube video you produced was amazing and has many hits and comments from viewers all over the world. Yes. How do you feel about that? It really feels good to, to see how much attention that, you know, that received. Uh, it, it was amazing when the video went up on YouTube and it real f quickly there was so many hits so many hits and on Vimeo was as well with um, comments about President Obama and the story that the video tells which is one of a, a person coming up from the you know from where they were and his rise to the presidency and um, we wrote the song and um, recorded it and then we decided to do a video and we sat down and and tried to figure out, you know, the best way to put it together so that everybody would get an opportunity to see that um, the progression that President Obama took um, to get to where he, um, he ended up, you know, arriving at, you know. And um, it was just a fun project all the way around. And, the key thing, yeah. if I may, is he was someone like me. That was the title of the song. Right. We wanted to make it more about a normal person or, excuse me, we're all normal, but a person that came from pretty much nothing and rose to be to the presidency. Mm -hmm. And the song is pretty much trying to say, we can do it. He is someone just like us. As mm -hmm. great as he is, he's someone like me. Right. That's so empowering. I love that. Speaking of international songs, you guys are gearing up to release a new album featuring a song called Desert Nights in Oman. Can you tell us a little bit about that song and how you came about writing it? Sure we can. And Bob will tell you now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, Desert Nights in Oman was just a groove at first, you know, it was just a, a nice groove that um, I was thinking about, and I liked that kind of a, you know, Calypso type groove, and, um, but then, you know, you start to put together the content of the song, and, and I was reminded of um, 
um, vacation spots and things like that. So, you know, the, the, like I said, we do collaborate and we all collaborated on this, but um, there was this place that I, I knew about and it's in the Middle East. It's a country, a small country right off near Saudi Arabia, right across from Iran on the Arabian Sea called Oman and did some research on it. And it's a great vacation spot. I mean, it has lots of uh, nice sights and, and of the sea and an enjoyable place and a beautiful beaches. And it's just a beautiful place. And I thought, why don't we go ahead and just write a song about this? The place? whole picture is already painted for me. I'm oh, picturing myself man. there laying on the beach. <laughs> He's a travel agent. Bob is a travel agent. <laughs> yeah. I might just it, have to hire you for that. So <laughs> it, 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 it has a theme around it about, uh, you know, a, a guy who is talking to his girl and telling her that, you know, we, 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 once, we were there once. Let's go back there again. And, and we, we had a wonderful time. You know, it's something, it's like a magical place. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what um, the song is all about. It sounds beautiful. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you had one word to describe the song, the vibe of the song, what would that word be? Love in exotic places. So here's Desert Nights in Oman. Again, that was Desert Nights in Oman. Mm -hmm.
really felt like I was on a tropical beach there. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, glad you like it. I guess. In today's music, there's a large emphasis on single artists. How do you feel about being in a group as opposed to being a single artist? Being in a group, you normally lean on each other. You normally give feedback or if something's good or something isn't good. I mean, for these guys right here, there's nothing I wouldn't do for them because we've been in a lot of battle situations. I, I look at my musical instrument as battle gear and us going out performing like we're, uh, you know, when we're putting on a show, you know, we're, we're trying to entertain. So in a band situation, again, I'm repeating myself. I can count on these guys for feedback if something's good, if something's not good, and I can speak to them the same way. When you're a single artist, be it that you're a writer or you're not, you're just one entity. Whereas it was with us, we're a band. Right. Family. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, there's something about that, that, um, you know, you, you have to experience it to know it. Um, when you're playing as musicians with each other, you kind of feed off each other and you feel a thing. It's nothing like when you're laying down a groove and we're and everybody's in it and they're feeling it and things like that. And then it's the same way when you're writing a song, you're creating a song together and it, and it, and it all comes together. And it's just something about that as a single artist. In most cases, they, someone's writing the songs for them and they're just singing that, you know, alone. And in today's music, um, they almost, it's almost like each artist is almost the same. Their style is the same. They use the auto tone on their voice to, to get that certain kind of sound. And the, the music sounds the same. And, they, they, you know, they try to beef it up with a lot of um, dancers behind them to to emphasize the individual who's singing the song and things like that. In a group, it's just it's just a, a, a bit different because we have, um, you know, like I said, individuals up there. Each is more than one thing to see, and 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 it's more than one thing to actually hear because you're listening to uh, the quality of the, the musicians that are playing in in things of that sort. Can you agree with that? Yes, and we're actually playing our instruments and not playing to a track. Right, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. That sounds like it would be a bit more fun, too. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Always also remember, in a group or a band situation, there's always one character for a different member of the audience. Right. You know, for them to like, you know, like... Mm -hmm. One person might love the lead singer. Oh, gosh, he's dreamy. Oh, I just love him. <laughs> right. And then another person might just look at the drummer and go, gosh, I love the way he plays the drums. He's just, right. you know, fantastic or ridiculous. So exactly. there's a little bit of something for everyone. Right. That's great. Mm-hmm. Does it get tough when, are there ever little in-house feuds? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do you deal with that? <laughs> with well, the, so many voices delicately. in the band. Yeah, well, the, the difference, at least I can speak for myself, um, you ever watch those old Warner Brother cartoons <laughs> where uh, where they would have uh, the sheepdog and the, and the coyote and they would punch out the clock, right? You know, he'd be beating the, the coyote up and they'd go, whoop, and he'd punch the clock and then they would walk away and they would be friends. So, so we're like that. It's like, you know, at rehearsal or, you, you know, you deal with that situation there, but when rehearsal's over and everything, right. we're done with it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. We get serious when yeah. we strap up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, game time. Yeah. yeah. Game time. Hope I answered your question. You did. Okay. You definitely did. Right. I think I'll start a band. <laughs> <laughs> so, on your upcoming new album, you have a song called You Say You Love Me. Mm-hmm. There's a video out on YouTube already. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, You Say You Love Me. The concept came from um, our lead singer, Julio. He um, brought it in and said, hey, here's a nice song. And we thought it was pretty interesting the way it was, you know, he had um, put it together. And we, um, Dick and I worked on it a little bit on our own first and tried to come up with an idea. Julio heard it and said, oh, not exactly what I wanted. Uh, so uh, we then we all collaborated together again. And then and um, then everybody put, you know, a little bit in into it. And before you know it. You got you say you love me as you go as you hear it now and and it and it's a nice song a very nice song and it was fun doing the video, um, trying to put together the storylines that we wanted to put together we wanted to convey, the person watching it, um, the different stories of the individuals in, in the um, video, um, what they were going through, 
in their particular story. And it was, but it had to end up with the same theme. I don't want to give away too much. Check the video out. You'll see it's very nice and very well done. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much um, what I know about You Say You Love Me and how we put it together. If you had one word or phrase to best describe You Say You Love Me, what would that be? To describe You Say You Love Me, I would say well, Love phrase. Shattered.
You've got a dance tune on the album called Do Like This. What is this? <clears throat> Do Like This is a song basically about uh, parents wanting their children to be like them. Mm. They're pretty much trying to say in the song, if you do like this, if you be like this, you know, you'll be like me. Mm. And, of course, the child or children, they want to rebel against that because they don't want to be like their parents. This is where the rebellion part comes in, folks. Mm. Remember that. <laughs> Naturally. Um, <laughs> and that's what the song is basically about. Mm. You know? right. Do like this, be like this, move like this. Where did mm. Where did you come up with that? concept for the song because i have parents <laughs> <laughs> who's always told me what to do and how to be right and how to move do like this the song kind of goes into both areas where the parent is is trying to you know convince the child that this is the best thing for you and the child on the other side is saying this is the things we like to do you know and so I think that's what um, I think that's what Do Like This is all yeah. about. Actually. What's really funny about it is, even though we're calling the song Do Like This, <laughs> the correct title is Do Be Move. Right. <laughs> right. That's, that was the original title for it. Too. I like that. Yeah. It's a concept. Yeah. Before we get into Do Like This, what can your audience look forward to for the rest of the year from Messenger? Well, we've got some things planned for the rest of the year, but... Um, Going into the new year, we're, we're looking forward to do, you know, more personal appearances and some touring. But to, to, to answer your question um, regarding the rest of this year, in November, then this month, we, we're going to, around Thanksgiving time, be releasing the new album. Um, and so you get a chance to hear some of our, our newer material at that time. And that will be coupled with a couple of videos that we're going to probably be putting out at the same time. And um, um, that were, you know, related to the songs on the album. Also, um, podcasts, information, the thing like what we're doing now. Maybe you'd be getting a chance to check out that as well. And additionally, um, we like to also talk about uh, in the Christmas season coming up, we have a song, a Christmas song that we put together and that we're going to re-releasing again. Um, you can get it on our album. I'm, I'm sorry. You can get it on our website, um, www.messengerisback.com. And you can get all of our music and video um, information about Messenger on our website. But um, you can also pick it up in on most online stores and on iTunes and Spotify. Um, but those are some of the things that we're going to be doing um, to end, uh, end this year up and um, going into the new year. Busy, busy. Mm. I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look forward to it. Get yours today. <laughs> and now, do like this from Messenger. Like this, move like this. They say, do like this, be 
like this, more like this. has been a wonderful show. We'll see you next time. And thanks for tuning in to the clipboard.